There used to be a time when groups ran the fucking world, and now they are literally extinct. And by extinct, I mean yes, there are groups out there today, but they are struggling to make an impact on today's music audience. By the mid-2010s, there were less bands competing on the Hot 100 when compared to the 2000s and prior. It's extremely hard to market them now. Groups don't sell out like groups did back in the past. The bands that have the most impact in today's music scene are the old ones. Coldplay, Paramore, Maroon 5 even though they're kinda washed, but still, Maroon 5. I have a theory, if groups were still poppin', Billie Eilish and her brother Phineas would be marketed as an actual duo, so would be the case for Ice Spice and her producer Riot USA, if being in a group was still relevant today. For this video, let's have a discussion about music groups and why they are no longer needed, i.e. what the f happened to them. I will also talk about the rise of bands and the reason why they won't make a comeback anytime soon. I am Don, your pop culture boy. Let's get into it. I want to first start with the rise of the band, or the glory days when bands were in high demand. And let's start at the British Invasion. Now, if you're like, what is the British Invasion? Don't worry, I'm going to break it down. Now, the British Invasion refers to the cultural phenomenon when a massive influx of both rock and pop bands from the UK started to impact the US music scene in the mid-1960s. Most notably, the Bee Gees, the Rolling Stones, the Kinks, and drumroll, the Beatles, just to name a few. And this wasn't the only time when the British took over the US music scene. Adele, Natasha Benningfield, Jesse J, K.O. Cruz, Amy Winehouse, Jay Sean, and Leona Lewis. Those acts from the UK impacted the Billboard Hot 100 in the mid to late 2000s. Anyway, the Beatles would have unprecedented mania in the United States, known as Beatle Mania. After their arrival, they were blowing people's minds, causing pandemonium and hysteria amongst teenage girls. Saying the Beatles were oh successful is a bit of an understatement, Gavna. And I would also argue that the Beatles made the music industry pursue bands a lot more because the fame they had was really insane. It put execs in dire discovery mode because, you know, bands made a lot of money back then. Bands are make a dance. Now, it's not like there weren't any groups in the US prior to the Beatles. There was the Beach Boys, the Jackson 5, the Birds, but it was the solo acts that got most of the attention. Now let's walk on over to the 90s and 2000s. In the 90s, groups were everywhere, and it wasn't just rock bands, but R&B, hip-hop, pop, and alternative bands. One of the main selling points about these groups to the audience was that you'd have a particular member that you relate to the most. Each member had their own thing that made them special to the group. You know, you had the shy one, the edgy one, the goofy one, or the lover boy, or the tomboy. And in a marketing standpoint, this was extremely important when it comes to merchandising. And if some lesser liked member or members fucked up, they got replaced just like that. Like how Latoya and Latavia fucked around and found out from Matthew Knowles. On the topic of Destiny's Child, let's talk about some groups that were popping in the 90s and 2000s. Now to be honest, Destiny's Child was not a group that I paid attention to. One, I was too young to care. At that time, the only music I would listen to, uh, do you remember when Disney Channel had those music videos? playing during commercial breaks. Now, those were my shit. <laughs> and like music my parents listened to, like Buju Bantan and Celine Dion. <laughs> anyway, I didn't give a fuck about Destiny's Child until their last album, after seeing their Cater to You music video. You know the music video where they gave Beyonce a swimming pool, Kelly got a car, and they gave Michelle a lawn chair. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Yo! It's not funny. It's really not funny. <laughs> The Cater to You music video was monumental, causing boners around the world. Can we talk a little bit more on how they did Michelle dirty for no reason at all? They gave our favorite girl a lawn chair and a fucking flask. And it breaks my heart because in terms of music in the group, Michelle was my favorite. 
Maroon 5 was another band that ruled the 2000s. If it wasn't for Maroon 5, I don't think I would be a fan of rock music because like there weren't like hardcore, sometimes actually, but for the most part, they were an alternative rock slash soft rock band that had a more jazz and soul vibe with their arrangement of live instruments. And they had so many great songs off of their debut studio album, Songs About Jane, released in 2002. Harder to breathe, this love, this love has Love that song. She will be loved. She will. Bruh, I can go on and on, <laughs> but I won't. Or should I? She will. Bruh. She will. Bruh. It's so good. I was really lucky. So they dominated the charts in their prime, and I was a huge fan of their music, so it's kind of sad how bad their music has become now. They don't even sound like a band anymore. Their music has gotten so generic sounding and so synthetic where I'm like, a band made this bullshit? Adam Levine still has a good voice after all these years, but they need to get the fuck out of the music industry with this bullshit. That aside, Maroon 5 used to be the shit. Other bands that ruled this period were TLC, Spice Girls, The Pussycat Dolls, Boyz II Men, Nirvana, Blink-182. They had that song that played in every high school theme movie in the 2000s. There was also Coldplay. Back then, they were really popping. Uh, Gorillaz, S Club 7, B2K, NSYNC, Who Needs No Introduction, Pretty Ricky, Cherish, Paramore, Backstreet Boys, 112. Remember the song 112 had, Peaches and Cream? Know what I mean? They were singing about eating in a limousine with peaches and ice cream and they had us singing that shit when we were kids and <laughs> we had no idea. You sit your f***ing ass down now and eat my- There was just so many popping groups back then. If I named them all, this video wouldn't end. So if I missed to mention your favorite group from the 90s and 2000s, let me know in the comments. Now by the 2010s, there were still groups around, but like groups that were like emerging and also popping, not as much like the 2000s. And to be real, the band mania actually started to slow down in the 2000s, but there was just so many of them that at least got a hit, it wasn't noticeable. But by the 2010s, there wasn't a lot of them. And as they emerged from the curtains, they exited the stage. Grand opening, grand closing. Mm. <laughs> okay, love ya. Uh... No, I don't. Like British boy band The Wanted, they were formed in 2009 and became one of the acts that was a part of the last British invasion after their song Glad You Came peaked at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100, the highest American chart entry by a British boy band at the time. New Boys, the hip hop duo, that faded extremely fast. And that's the thing with the 2010s. A lot of the group's hype did not last three years. Fun. Remember them? They came and went before you could say, even Florence and the Machines. They had a quick run. Even Ray Shermerd. They had a quick run as well, as a duo at least. There are only a few that made a name for themselves in the 2010s that are still relevant, like 21 Pilots, One Republic, Imagine Dragons. I'm literally googling groups of the 2010s and 90% of them I do not know. One Direction would be the only band I'd say that had that real group essence to them, including commercial success to match it. Like a lot of these groups nowadays, they don't seem yoked, and One Direction wasn't fully stable as Zayn left the group, but they appeared stable compared to other groups who emerged in the 2010s. You just saw them, you know that they weren't really a group. One Direction definitely brought back that mania we saw with NSYNC and even the Beatles. Not to that level, but still insane. And I know some of you are probably be saying what about little mix to me they didn't have an impact um in the u.s music scene in my opinion and for this video i want to focus on acts that mainly had an impact in the u.s as the u.s is the holy grail for music and that's just the truth little mix did make some headway in the u.s they try to hold on to it but they just couldn't maintain it like i don't know one person outside of the uk who likes them that's grown they typically appeal to little kids and i know some probably are also saying what about k-pop look k-pop is trash like only little kids enjoy that shit but yeah the 2010s made it evident that bands are dead and bands slash groups weren't even being talked about as much. A lot of us do not want groups anymore. We're now in the 2020s and when we talk about groups, we are talking about Chloe X Halley. I see some people talking about the UK group Flow. 
but I don't know. I think they all need to go solo. There is this duo called Flyana Boss. They went viral last year on TikTok with their song You Wish. Hello, Christ. I'm about to sit again. They had the very memeable video of them running towards the camera. I think they have a strong brand, but I feel like people also find it hard to accept a female group that does hip hop versus R&B or pop or any other genre for that matter. I think today female hip hop groups or duos are seen as corny. Groups are not profitable anymore. Again, look at Chloe X Halley. They went solo because the duo efforts wasn't cutting it. And I get why they started making solo work. You know, uh, they both do movies, especially Halley. She's like a huge movie star right now. You know, after starring in The Little Mermaid and she, you know, has more things coming up. She also had a baby. But there is a part of me that wish they'd give us one more album. But let's be real, their first two studio albums flopped. This has been happening since the 2000s with Destiny's Child, Beyonce went solo, In and Sync, Justin Timberlake went solo, even Nicole Scherzinger from the Pussycat Dolls went solo at one point. So it's cooler to be a solo act. This is what the 2020s groups look like now. And of course the old ones are still here, but fuck that. I want to see the new generation of groups come in and piss all over the place. It's not a good thing that the older generations are still leading. That's why music is dead right now, because there aren't enough young people killing it. And the older generations are not as innovative. Now, according to Billboard.com, groups are an endangered species. They said since 2018, groups account for less than 8% of all top 10 singles. The last ensemble to submit the chart was Glass Animals with Heat Waves in 2022. No group scored a top 10 hit as a lead artist in the first half of 2024. And there is not a single group anywhere on the Hot 100. Social media has really changed the game for bands. It's a lot to keep up with five different individuals. And social media, which is the number one tool used by artists today, is better tailored for solo acts. While making this video and researching, you know, checking out different forums online to see how the public is reacting to this conversation, some think that record labels prefer solo acts right now, which isn't necessarily true because labels are still signing bands today. What's happening is that bands are just not priority, so they aren't getting that push. Like if people wanted bands, the industry would push them, but people don't want them right now. Some are also saying groups are harder to control true, but artists in general are difficult and are always pushing back and not being uh, receptive when given advice by their teams or whatever. Some are also saying it's a money thing as the splits be crazy, which I both agree and disagree with because a lot of these groups don't care about the money unless it's the ones that were put together by a record label. But truth be told, most of these groups, they don't care about the money like that. A lot of them will shack up and live with each other for the rest of their lives. Now, this is what I think that happened. Since the 60s, rock music was the main genre you'd find bands to be in. Bands were the epitome of the genre. It used to be cool to be in a rock band. Rockers were seen as brash, in your face, and rebellious. It was the aesthetic of rebellion, which was used as the main tool to get the kids on board with the music for decades. But as time went by and the world got more connected because of the internet, other genres other than pop and rap has entered the chat. That doesn't require a band. Bands aesthetics are also ran on this notion of do it yourself or a more natural nature. But because of the development of technology i.e. FL Studio and other audio software, one person can replicate what a band of six persons can accomplish without knowing how to use an actual instrument in real life. Rock music and its whole aesthetic became obsolete. So the archetype that is attached to rock music, which is the band, would also become obsolete. And this is the natural order of things. Remember, the opera or orchestra was how music was displayed, but that got replaced with jazz. Jazz got replaced with rock and roll, and then finally rock was dethroned by hip-hop. And now, country is on the rise. 
no one's inspired to be in a band right now because rock, the once most popular genre that pushed the band aesthetic in the US, has been dethroned. The source of bands is no longer relevant, and its image is not relatable anymore. It's more synonymous with people under 30 and meme culture. And that's why bands are no longer relevant. It's cooler to stand alone. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section. I want to see what y'all think about this topic. I'm Don, your pop culture boy, and I will see you in the next one.